I wanted to make a quick and easy video, so I think it's Windows mod time once again. A while ago, I got a suggestion in my Discord server to try out a mod of Windows called Windows Hypernova. So I thought, sure, fuck it, why not? This is a mod that aims to remake Windows 9 from GMM's alternate Windows timeline. Yeah, so I, I don't know what that is, but I think I finally figured it out. It's mentioned on this website, which is the only site that I could find on this, and it references this video. And skipping to about 8 minutes in, we get a look at this so-called Windows 9, and yep, comparing the two side by side, they look identical, pretty much. But ignoring that, this appears to be pretty similar to Windows Longhorn, both pre- and post-reset, taking a lot of visual elements from that. As you might know, I've done a lot of Windows Longhorn nonsense on this channel, so this kind of thing certainly piqued my interest. I've already covered another mod on my channel called Windows 2007, which is another Windows Vista beta inspired mod, and for that I used an HP Pavilion DV8000. However, that computer doesn't work anymore, so we're going to use a slightly different machine, an HP Pavilion DV5000 from about 2006 with an Intel Core Solo T1350 CPU, 4GB of RAM, and Intel 945 integrated graphics. It's certainly nothing special, but it will do the trick. Since this is apparently based on Windows Server 2003, I was worried that this wasn't going to be possible on physical hardware because it wasn't going to be able to be put on a USB stick via Rufus, but that isn't the case. Taking a look at the ISO file structure reveals that this is apparently using the setup of Windows 7. A lot of the files originate from about 2011, and it's configured using a Windows image, so this can be put on a USB stick without any problem. This mod was made in about August of 2024, so this is still pretty recent too. Anyway, this DV5000 is coincidentally running Windows 2007, but anyway, that's not what we're here for, so let's get started. This computer, like a lot of the other HP things I have, has an interesting quirk with it where it only loads at USB 1 speeds uh, in the BIOS, so loading anything off of USB takes a bit of time. The starting WinPE screen is different than the one used in Windows 7. So is the boot screen, which comparing it to the original video looks similar. The background of the setup is different. It also contains the license agreement for Windows XP Professional, but otherwise, a lot of this is just standard Windows 7 stuff that you might expect. There's nothing really too crazy there. The Windows image file is a lot smaller than a typical Windows Vista or Windows 7 one. It's about 1.3 gigs. The whole ISO itself is only 1.6 gigs, so this doesn't take very long to install. The theme of the auto-check screen is also different, and the hardware detection phase of setup has been replaced with the screen used in very early Windows Vista beta builds, which was a neat thing that I was not expecting to see at all. It really didn't take that long to install, and when we were done, the changes stopped with the out-of-box experience. This is just using the Windows XP out-of-box experience, though clear type is enabled. But otherwise, after that, it looks pretty much identical to the stuff shown in the video. So we have to do the usual stuff before I can actually take a look at this, though drivers were a bit more of an interesting task because this is based on Windows Server. This computer didn't ever get proper drivers for that, so getting primarily the GPU driver working was a bit of fun. The logon screen's a bit interesting. It's got kind of a mix of the post-reset Windows Vista Beta 1 logon screen mixed with the color scheme of the original Longhorn setup. At least that's what it looked like to me. It's also got a post-reset Windows Vista theme going on, at least on the taskbar, as well as the start menu. Several other Windows Vista arrow elements are in this OS, 
like an arrow inspired mouse cursor and a lot of icons throughout the operating system are different. The visual style is based on the Jade theme from late pre-reset Windows Longhorn builds. It even goes dark when you fully maximize a window. But what's also interesting is that you can apparently enable Arrow on this by doing some registry mods similar to post-reset Longhorn that we will cover eventually. You can get a glassy theme enabled in this, which on a Windows XP based thing is, uh, uh, is very interesting. It's definitely pretty glitchy, it also doesn't really work that well on this computer, but it's pretty cool. You can also run the WinSAT Aurora thingy from post-reset Longhorn builds on this. A lot of the Windows Explorer elements are still unchanged compared to Windows XP. I feel like there's just kind of limits on how much you can really change. But there have been some things added in Control Panel, like clear type tuning, which was an applet found in Windows 7 beta versions. There is also a new personalization window, which mimics the one found in early Windows Vista builds. It has the characteristic of pre-reset Longhorn, however, in that it's basically just a hub uh, that contains shortcuts to the old style window. Now, in a mod like this, again, that kind of makes sense. There's also been an entire new sound scheme that's been added. There's also the system info window that has been taken from Windows Vista build 5259. This never actually made it into a final version of Windows. So this wasn't really something I was expecting to see here. The banner in any of the about windows uh, has also been changed to one that's pretty much just the Windows Longhorn one, except uh, the text has been replaced with Windows Hypernova. There's also been some Vista E programs that have been added. You can install the sidebar from Vista build 5219. It doesn't really function that well because it didn't in that build, but it's here. This also contains the built-in games developed by Aberon Media. These aren't the full versions from the final build, I don't believe. I can't honestly recall what build these were pulled from, but it is interesting to see them here. Ones like Purple Place aren't finalized, which is what kind of gives this away as not being the final versions. And Mahjong Titans is called Shanghai Solitaire, but still pretty interesting. Of course, this also contains 3D Pinball. For obvious reasons. The Task Manager is also slightly different in this. And there's some other smaller modifications as well, like paint and notepad being replaced with Windows Vista beta versions. But under the hood, this is still regular Windows. It still contains normal Windows things like Internet Explorer 6 and Windows Media Player 10, and even things like Windows Movie Maker. A lot of updates and runtimes and things have been added into this out of the box. So it's in theory possible to install things and actually use this. Not that I had any brilliant ideas for this. I did check anyway to see if any updates could be installed on this because I didn't know that until after I tried. But it's got a lot of stuff already built in and it even includes things like one core API. So yeah, you could in theory actually use this for stuff. So this mod's definitely pretty interesting. I always enjoy taking a look at these fun, goofy Windows mods that actually sort of try to be, like, official. And this one's done pretty well. It seems as though there was quite a bit of work put into this. 
there's definitely some issues with it. There are some that are noted in a document on the desktop. The most annoying one that I found is that USB drives don't properly work in Windows Explorer until you reboot the computer every time, which can get a little bit annoying. Really about it, otherwise it's not bad at all.